If you follow the shoe industry or just sports in general, you've probably seen these new Nike concept shoes they've just launched ahead of the Paris Olympics in what they call their Nike Airline or Athlete Imagined Revolution. And Nike states these shoes are a product of a collaboration between Nike designers, artificial intelligence, and their athletes. Now, I understand these are concept shoes, but like concept cars, you know, they serve as a roadmap for where the brand is starting to go. And if you read one of the articles on, especially on Complex, which is one of the bigger publications on this, it says the air range is currently just conceptual, but it should serve as a guide for what's coming down the pipeline for the swoosh, meaning Nike. So I, I wanna, you know, check out all these, but really focus on Victor Wembanyama's because for a court shoe, it is just so out there. And I wanna see if there's really anything grounded to reality from these shoes or if it really is more marketing. So let's get into it. All right, now starting off looking at the top of these things, and, and honestly, if you just pull back away from when Binyama's shoe and look at the entire range, you can tell this was designed by AI without Nike ever having to say anything, because look, they all kind of have the same features to them. They're all super high-heeled shoes. The heel of them is all off the ground, and just about all of these shoes, they all kind of have the same silhouette. I mean, Mbappe's you know football boot is kind of the most impractical of all of these, because for a football boot, it only looks like it has one spike in the back. It's up off the ground, so if you're just standing foot flat, you're going to be at a negative heel, right, on soft earth. So... Honestly, Wembenyama's is not the most impractical shoe in this line, but for sure there's enough clues in here that, that these were all designed by the same AI. Now starting off with the front side or interior view of Wembenyama's shoe, as you can see, this looks to be a laceless entry. Now Adidas has done this pretty well with the Stycons as well as the Next Level Future Natural, and they are definitely more stable than you would think they would be. They're also a lot heavier because it takes more material to put you in this shoe. This shoe looks pretty darn streamlined, but depending on what they do in terms of the midsole, which we'll talk about when we get to the lateral side, um, that might be what all that bulk on the lateral side is for, for sure. But that is a pretty small entry, so that does need to be a pretty elastic ankle collar and, you know, and heel counter. And then when you go into the forefoot, there actually is quite a bit of room here in the metatarsal heads, it looks like, from the anterior view. And that actually does go into a lateral flange here. You can actually see that from the anterior view. But then that thing just tapers like crazy there in the forefoot, which... I mean, I don't know if you've seen Wembenyama's feet before, but I'm not sure that's gonna be the ideal you know, situation for him. Now, if you look here on the lateral side of his shoe, what I find interesting is, is this air unit kind of goes up with the slope of the shoe. Now, my question is, is this a Zoom Air? Is this Air Max? Is this some sort of, of you know, hybrid or new type of chambered air? Because if that actually is air going through the entire shoe right here in the proximal midfoot going into the rear foot, then the drop on this shoe is insane. Wembenyama is already over seven foot tall. With these things on, he's gonna be like the eight foot NBA player. And for someone like him who needs all the feel of the ground they can get, remember he plays in the Nike GT Run, GT Hustle 2, and although they both have air between his foot and the ground, they also are very low to the ground feeling shoes. Whereas if this one, if that is air going all the way through there, he is propped up like crazy in these. Now, Nike has done a lot of different things with chambered air, and this could be a new system where you're seeing the visible air, then there are actually chambers going under the shoe, and you're actually sitting a little bit more foot flat. Like some of the other shoes you see now, foam, that comes up over the lateral side, medial side of the shoe, and you think, oh my God, I'm standing on that huge stack of foam, whereas in reality, that's more window dressing. So that could be what this is, and if that's the case, my question is, where does that dive into the shoe and what exactly are you standing on? And if that is the case, that would be interesting, like I said, looking at the shoe from the anterior side. If you look at the rear foot of the shoe, all that bulk and material, that could all be aids in keeping you stable in the rear foot of that shoe. If that is the case then, I would definitely say I'm a little bit more interested. The thing to me is, is that, you know, the proportions here on the anterior side of the shoe where the ankle collar would meet the lace line. To me, the proportion of that just makes it seem like your midfoot would have to be so tall to fit into the shoe. Unless, like I said, there are, you know, there's other material in there, but it just doesn't seem like that could be a super glove-like fit for a laceless entry type shoe. And I think that's where you see kind of the disconnect between AI and a human designing the shoe, whereas AI, you know, starts coming up with really complex things when you start asking it to like tell you the future of shoes. Whereas in reality, a lot of times shoe design gets simpler and simpler and that's how it gets better and better. I also think in terms of practicality, and, and like I said, you know, they said it should serve as, as a guide for what's going forward. 
I'd find that interesting if it's really the air units that they're trying to incorporate and maybe there's some new hybrid air units that are coming out. The next innovation from Air Max to Zoom Air to whatever Nike's gonna start calling it in the future where you could actually see kind of more of a, of a bulging air unit on the shoe and then it can kind of create some different chambers. Honestly, messing with the chemistry of the air units in there, I think would be the most interesting. Like what kind of gases can you put in those? How much PSI can you get to? Can you, know, can you do some of that stuff that you know the human eye will not see it? That's all in the R&D lab. That's all in the chemistry lab. I think that's where Nike can start messing with their air units. Can they take that polyurethane pouch that the air units come in and can they do something with that maybe instead of just changing the, the shape and changing the outward appearance of the air? That's kind of where I'd like to see these. Like I said, it's interesting that the AI was coming up with all these high heeled shoes, whereas you know, and most of the time you want a little bit more feel, especially in a court shoe. I mean, I understand with track shoes, right? You're up on the balls of your foot, but in terms of the court shoes, things you need more feel. It is interesting that you started to see the slope. Basically all of them didn't matter what sport it was. Those were all sloping up. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on these and just kind of see, like I said, I, a, a little impractical for sure. And I'd love to know what parts of these shoes that if Nike is taking these concepts into the future, what part of these concepts is Nike taking forward and which of these are just, you know, basically meant for like a World's Fair type exhibition. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you do want to see a deeper dive into Victor Wembanyama's actual shoes that he's wearing right now, I will leave that playlist up above and make sure you subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam and apparently 3D printed resins of some sort. I'll see you somewhere in the sneakerverse.